At the time of recording this video, the semiconductor company NVIDIA has a market cap of $750 billion, making it the sixth most valuable company in the world, worth more than Berkshire Hathaway, Meta, and Tesla. But by revenue and net income, it's not even in the top 100. NVIDIA's market cap is equal to 29 times last year's sales, and a whopping 173 times last year's net income. What makes the valuation of NVIDIA even more surprising is that we are currently experiencing a historic chip glut. According to Gartner, recent declines in PC sales are the worst in 20 years. NVIDIA is by no means immune to this. Since its recent peak last year, the chipmaker's revenue has fallen by almost 30%, and its net income has been more than cut in half as prices of their GPUs have fallen. Many technology stocks have experienced the so-called pandemic round trip. During 2020 and 2021, they skyrocketed as work from home caused a massive increase in demand for their products and services. But as the economy returned to normal, they gave back some if not all of those gains. Nvidia experienced something similar with its share price falling by 65% as profits declined in 2022. But over the past few months, its share price has more than doubled, almost reachieving its pandemic highs. This is despite the fact that its revenue and profits are still far lower. The monster rally we've seen over the past few months is almost entirely attributable to the hype around ChatGPT and generative AI. Generative AI models require huge amounts of computing power to train and operate. Nvidia's graphics cards are necessary to supply this computing power. In these early stages, nobody knows which company will be the leader in generative AI. It could be Microsoft, Google, or some new company that doesn't exist yet. But it doesn't matter who is successful. Either way, they'll have to buy Nvidia graphics cards to run their AI models. This all sounds great. Nvidia is the picks and shovels play to benefit from the coming AI gold rush. This might all sound familiar because we've seen this movie before. The internet infrastructure company Cisco was the Nvidia of its day. It created routers and other hardware necessary for connecting enterprises to the internet. During the dot-com bubble of the late 90s and early 2000s, Cisco saw its revenue explode as every company wanted to get connected to the internet. All of this hype caused a massive bubble in Cisco's share price, and the company achieved a peak valuation of more than half a trillion dollars. While the new internet age was real, Cisco's valuation was completely unjustified. When the bubble popped, its share price fell by 90%. More than 20 years later, it is still far below its all-time highs. Currently, Nvidia is benefiting from a similar amount of hype. So in today's video, we'll take a deep dive into Nvidia and see whether its share price will suffer the same fate as Cisco, or if this time it's different. Nvidia creates graphics cards, also known as GPUs, for both consumers and enterprises. On the consumer side, they sell for around $200 at the cheapest, all the way up to more than $2,000 for their newest and most powerful systems. The biggest use case for graphics cards is PC gaming. If you want to play AAA games like Call of Duty or Halo on high resolution, you need a graphics card to render the complex graphics in real time. Nvidia graphics cards are also used by content creators such as YouTubers for video editing. On the Wall Street Millennial team, we use Nvidia GPUs to create videos including the one you're watching right now. Nvidia also creates larger, more powerful GPUs for cloud computing applications. For example, their DGX A100 system has a suggested retail price of $200,000. These chips are purchased by the likes of Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, who use them to power their massive data centers. Nvidia's GPUs have the best performance on the market, which has allowed them to secure dominant market share. As of 2022, Nvidia had 88% market share, making them a near monopoly. The pandemic was a huge boost for Nvidia. The company has two main revenue segments, video gaming and data center. Both of them grew massively in 2020 and 2021. With people stuck at home, they turned to video games as their main source of entertainment. Also, with so many people working from home, there was a surge in the usage of virtual desktops and other work from home software. This all required a large amount of computing power. Cloud computing companies like Microsoft and Amazon bought NVIDIA GPUs to expand their data centers. Additionally, the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing policies created a massive bubble in the price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. As it turns out, NVIDIA GPUs are useful not only for video games and data centers, but also for mining Ethereum. With the price of Ethereum skyrocketing, miners were buying graphics cards hand over fist in an attempt to mine as many coins as possible. By 2021, demand for GPUs skyrocketed as gamers, crypto miners, and data centers were all trying to get their hands on as many as possible. According to PC Mag, a graphics card that cost $569 in 2020 saw its retail price increase to $749 one year later. But even this 30% increase wasn't enough to establish balance between supply and demand. Most retailers were out of stock. 
third-party sellers on Amazon and eBay were selling their used graphics cards for up to $1,275, almost double the retail price. By 2021, Nvidia's revenue had more than doubled compared to 2019, and their net income nearly tripled to $10 billion. This impressive growth made it one of the most popular stocks among both individual and institutional investors alike. In 2022, Nvidia was hit by a myriad of exogenous events, which proved disastrous. As the economy reopened, people went back outside and back to the office. This drastically decreased demand for video gaming and data center hardware. Secondly, 40-year high inflation forced people to divert a greater share of their income to necessities like food and fuel, leaving less disposable income for expensive graphics cards. And finally, in September of 2022, Ethereum transitioned to a proof-of-state model, which does not require nearly as much computing power. This decreased demand for NVIDIA GPUs for crypto mining purposes to almost zero. NVIDIA's video gaming-related revenue was almost cut in half in the second half of 2022. The data center segment held up a little bit better, but its growth also flatlined and then decreased slightly. On the bright side, because Nvidia's graphics cards are so expensive, their profit margins are very high. So even with significant revenue declines, they were still profitable and they were never at any risk of going bankrupt. Nevertheless, Nvidia's stock price declined by 65%. This kind of share price volatility is normal for semiconductor stocks, as the industry is notoriously cyclical. Normally, during a chip glut, you have to wait a few years for demand to finally catch up to supply before semiconductor stocks recover. But in the case of Nvidia, the share price started increasing again just as quickly as it declined. The recovery of Nvidia's share price coincided almost exactly with the release of ChatGPT. While GPUs were originally designed for video game rendering, their ability to perform many computations simultaneously makes them very effective for training and operating AI models. GPUs are needed not only for the initial training of the AI model, but every time someone uses ChatGPT, computing power is needed to give them a response. So the number of GPUs required will scale with the number of users. According to the consulting firm Trendforce, OpenAI probably needed the equivalent of 20,000 DGX A100 NVIDIA GPUs to train the ChatGPT model. Those GPUs cost $200,000 each, so that costs a total of $4 billion. They further estimate that OpenAI needs the equivalent of about 30,000 of these systems to support the product's 100 million active users. This costs around $6 billion. OpenAI did not buy 30,000 NVIDIA GPUs. They partnered with Microsoft to leverage the tech giant's existing cloud computing infrastructure which already had the GPUs. As the AI industry grows, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, IBM, and many other companies will have to buy more GPUs. This benefit will accrue to NVIDIA. Nvidia will be one of the biggest beneficiaries of generative AI, there's no doubt about it. But is this enough to justify the company's $750 billion market cap and almost 30 times price to sales ratio? Hundreds or even thousands of investment bankers all around the world are doing complex calculations trying to figure this out. They're trying to estimate how many use cases there are for generative AI, how many people will use it, how many prompts they will make per day, etc. They take all of this to predict how much demand for Nvidia GPUs there will be over the next decade. Currently, the consensus is that the demand will be massive, and this justifies Nvidia being the sixth most valuable company in the world. In the 1990s, the exact same thing happened with Cisco. Investment bankers did their calculations about how big the internet would become, and how this would translate to a massive increase in demand for Cisco's routers and other internet infrastructure. So they kept increasing their price targets for Cisco's stock. Directionally, they were correct. The internet was revolutionary, and the growth of the industry did benefit Cisco but they massively overestimated the magnitude of this benefit, causing Cisco's stock to become a bubble. It ultimately lost 90% of its value when the bubble popped. It's extremely difficult to predict how a nascent industry will develop over a multi-year time horizon. It would thus be hubris for anyone to think that they can do this with any degree of accuracy. Generative AI is perhaps the most exciting technological development of this generation, just like the internet was the most exciting development 20 years ago. It's easy to get carried away thinking the potential is limitless. That's why we see the likes of Jim Cramer putting a $10 trillion price target on Nvidia. That's not to say the company won't be a good investment in the long run, but when there's so much hype around a stock, it pays to take a step back. Fortune does not always favor the bold. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about Nvidia? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.